Daniel Martin, a makeup artist and friend of Meghan, offered royal fans a glimpse of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's family life. The insider believes Meghan and Prince Harry have found the perfect balance with their two children Archie Harrison, and Lilibet Lily Diana. He told People Royals, they are loving life as a family of four. They've struck a rhythm as a foursome. Meghan and Prince Harry welcomed their first child in May 2019, one year after they tied the knot at St. George's Chapel in Windsor. As the Duke and Duchess's son was born while they were still senior royals, he was introduced to the world with a photo call held in St. George's Hall inside the Queen's Berkshire Castle. Archie also took part in the Sussex's tour of South Africa, during which he met Archbishop Desmond Tutu. The child travelled across the pond with his parents for an announced six-week break from royal duties in mid-November 2019, and has not returned to the UK since. Lily was born in June this year, more than one year after Meghan and Harry officially stepped down as senior royals. The baby was born at a Santa Barbara hospital, as announced by the Sussexes through their organization Archul. The Duke and Duchess have yet to release a picture of their daughter to the public. But they have provided a few updates about her over the past few months. In September, during the Sussexes' first ever public trip together to New York, a reporter asked the Duchess how her daughter was doing. While visiting the One World Trade Center, Meghan simply said, she's beautiful. Appearing on the Ellen DeGeneres show, the Duchess said, she is a good sleeper, but the teeth are coming in, so any mom will understand where you go they may be the best in the world, but the moment that is happening you have so much sympathy, so yes, I am up most of the night. Meghan also opened up on how the Sussexes had spent Halloween. She said, we wanted to do something fun for the kids and then the kids were not into it at all. Archie was a dinosaur for maybe five minutes. Still not even five minutes, Harry talked him into putting the head on. But Lilibet was a skunk, and it was so cute. She was the flower from Bambi. Meghan and Harry have taken part in more in-person events after their parental leave ended in late summer. In recent months, they traveled twice to New York to advocate for issues they deeply care about, including paid parental leave and vaccine equity. While they were happy to work on matters close to their heart, Mr. Martin said Meghan and Harry also couldn't wait to get home to be reunited with their beloved children. He added, it's about finding that work-life balance now, which ties into Meghan lobbying for parental paid leave. They're experiencing it themselves. They know it affects everyone in the family. Public is a group that campaigns for the monarchy to be abolished and the Queen to be replaced by an elected, democratic head of state. On Wednesday, the group claimed the monarchy costs taxpayers more than 345 million, this claim referred to a report previously published by Republic itself in the summer of 2017 with the aim of uncovering hidden costs of the Crown. The group tweeted, the royals claim to cost very little. The truth is that they cost us more than 345 meters a year, enough to pay for 13,000 new nurses or police officers. And no, they don't pay for themselves from the Crown Estate. And the monarchy a few monarchists and pro-republic supporters expressed their clashing views on the claim made by the organization. Twitter user Ador Stout replied to the post saying, as I've said before 345 meters is not very much money actually. So you're saying, even assuming they bring nothing back with that money, that they only use up around 0.04% of the annual budget. What's your evidence that an elected head of state, upkeep of historic palaces would cost less in your republic? Social media user Attic for Medium replied saying, the Republic would open up all historic palaces to tourists all year round. Also the Republic would keep the income from the duchies. Another supporter of republicanism, at Michelle Winniff, wrote, plus the Queen always gets an annual rise, in line with costs unlike most pensioners. This user referred to the Sovereign Grant Act 2011, which stipulates the cash amount the Queen receives cannot be less than that she received the previous year. A pro-monarchy Twitter user, at Jimbo79A, 
commented on Republic's tweet saying, this is lying on a similar scale. And as long as you repeat it, I will point you out. In its tweet, Republic referred to the 345 meters summit calculated in 2017 by adding to the sovereign grant, which four years ago amounted to 76.1 meters, other estimated expenses made by royals and the crown including the costs of security, the costs of ward lieutenants, and the costs covered by local councils for royal visits. With the passing of the years, some of these figures indicated by Republic in its report have changed. For example, the sovereign grant for the financial year 2020-2021 amounted to 85.9 meters. The breakdown of the costs of the monarchy included by Republic also included the annuity for the Duke of Edinburgh which, following his death in April this year, should no longer be taken into account in future estimates. In its report, the group said it is difficult to know exactly how much impact the monarchy has on taxpayers as some costs are either kept secret, such as the cost of security, or recorded in the accounts of individual trusts, local councils and government departments or simply ignored. It also conceded some of the costs we include are based on some assumptions and estimates that are not easy to verify. Asked to comment on Republic's claims, Buckingham Palace told Express.co.uk the security of the royal family is not a matter it discusses but, rather, is a matter for the Met Police. The palace also said to refer to the financial report being released every year and available on the royal family's website. The latest royal financial report published earlier this year shows the total sovereign grant for 2020-2021, including the dedicated amount for resurfacing Buckingham Palace, amounted to 85.9 meters up almost £3 million from the 2019-2020 grant. In its report, the palace said this latest sum is equivalent to 1.29 per person in the UK. The core grant itself, which funds official travel, property maintenance and the operating costs of the Queen TMS household, amounts to 51.5 metres, while the rest has been allocated to the refurbishing works at the Royal Residence in London. The financial report released at the end of every fiscal year by Buckingham Palace shows a breakdown of the expenditure, including payroll costs, property maintenance, travel, utilities, housekeeping and hospitality. The Sovereign Grant replaced the civil list in April 2012 and, as explained by Buckingham Palace, the Queen's official expenditure is met from public funds in exchange for the surrender by Her Majesty of the revenue from the Crown Estate. The core Sovereign Grant is calculated based on 15% of the income account net surplus of the Crown Estate for the financial year two years previous. Queen spent a night in hospital during the autumn, and the monarch subsequently faced cutting down her busy royal schedule. Although the Queen has held some engagements in recent weeks, other royals like Prince Charles and Prince William have been able to fill in for the monarch at some events while she has been recovering. Here is how several members of the royal family have stepped up their royal workload to support the Queen in recent months. The Queen's only daughter, Princess Anne, is often dubbed Britain's hardest working royal due to her unwavering dedication to the crown. Unlike other members of the royal family, Anne usually works under the radar, often filling her diary with several royal engagements each day. According to The Telegraph, Princess Anne has completed 368 engagements, so far this year, more than any other member of the royal family. And Anne has also reportedly taken on more investitures on behalf of the Queen than any other senior royals since summer 2021. The Queen had to cancel her planned appearance at the COP26 climate summit in Glasgow in November. But the Queen could depend on her son Prince Charles and his wife, Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, to lead the royal contingent at the flagship conference. Charles gave an impassioned speech during the opening night of the conference in front of assembled delegates. The Queen also had to pull out of the Remembrance Day event at the Cenotaph, an event known to be incredibly important to the Queen. But Charles was present to lay a wreath on the Queen's behalf at the memorial. In recent years, the Queen has made fewer trips abroad and has delegated many royal tours to her children and grandchildren. Last month, Charles and Camilla paid a visit to Egypt and Jordan for a four-day royal tour. 
Since the summer, Kate and William appear to have increased their public presence. William and Kate both attended the COP26 climate summit in November, in addition to the Remembrance Day service at the Cenotaph. Comparisons were drawn between Kate and the Queen at the latter due to Kate's position in the center of the balcony a place usually held by the Queen. Like his aunt Princess Anne, William has also carried out investitures on behalf of the Queen in recent months. And in addition to national events, Kate and William have also been pursuing their own charitable interests and patronages in recent months. William launched a walking audio tour with the Apple Fitness Plus Time to Walk series, to promote the benefits of walking for mental health. To mark the festive season, Kate also hosted the Together at Christmas concert at Westminster Abbey, which will be televised on Christmas Eve.